Hello students, welcome to second lecture of the course. In the last lecture, we discussed about what is the content of this course and we also discussed about what kind of questions we are going to ask and what kind of questions we are going to discuss. As I told you that the, this course consists of two parts. One is your theory of the spectroscopy or principles of the spectroscopy and second part deals with the applications. Applications will include the application in chemistry, application in biochemistry and application in medicine. So, in this lecture, I will focus on basics of the spectroscopy. So, as I discussed last time, spectroscopy is set of methods where interaction of electromagnetic radiation with chemical molecules is measured to obtain characteristics, properties and quantity. Characteristics, properties and quantity. So, there are two important points. One is electromagnetic inter radiation and its interaction with chemical molecule. So, first we will discuss about what is this electromagnetic radiation. So, first question comes is whether this electromagnetic radiation is a wave or particle. To understand this, we need to understand the difference between wave or particle. So, particles like baseball, car, a grain of sand or this pin can be located at a well defined point at a given time. So, particles can be located at a well defined point at a given time. So, at a particular point I can say that this pin is here. They can be at rest. So, for example, this pin can be at rest or this pin can be moving or accelerating. Ball is an example of particle and you can say that initially this ball is at this position and now it has started falling and at certain time it will be at this position at other time it will be at this position. So, with time it is changing the location, but at a certain time its location is well defined and that is how we define particle. Now, what are the waves? You must have seen water waves and sound waves. Waves are basically oscillation in space and time. They are delocalized. They cannot be localized. So, you can see here that with time your wave is moving. So, this is a wave traveling in the x direction and there is up and down oscillation. So, you can see there is up and down oscillation. This is the way a wave is represented. A wave repeats regularly in space. So, this is important point about wave that wave repeats regularly in space. Wave may be regarded as a ray trace of combination of uniform forward motion and uniform circular motion. So, now look at this wave. Suppose this is a point here with time it will move and it can come at this point. So, displacement in x direction reminds us of a uniform forward motion, but displacement around y axis, this vertical axis can be regarded as a uniform circular motion. See how you can uh, represent a vertical displacement with time as a uniform circular motion. So, suppose a point on the wave is here at time t is equal to 0 that can be represented as a point at this position. Now, what we are looking at 
is as the point moves can we represent the displacement vertical displacement with time by a circular motion. So, now look at this what we are comparing is y displacement or uh, displacement in y axis and displacement in y axis with rotation. So, now suppose you are here vertical displacement is 0 and if you are at this point vertical displacement is also 0 during the rotation. Particle goes to here and when it is here there is a maximum displacement and that corresponds to circular rotation by 90 degree circular rotation by 90 degree. So, when a point reaches to this position with time then this can be represented by a circular motion of 150 degree circular motion of 150 degree. When you are here this is your y displacement is 0 and that corresponds to a rotation by 180 degree or when you are here and this corresponds to 270 degree rotation, 270 degree rotation and again here your vertical displacement is maximum in minus y direction and same is the case with this point. Now, when this point reaches at this position, this is corresponding to 330 degree rotation and if it comes to this position then you are basically have done one whole rotation. So, going from this position to this position corresponds to one cycle of the rotation. So, change in horizontal displacement with time is similar to uniform forward motion whereas, the change in vertical displacement with time is similar to uniform circular motion uniform circular motion. So, wave is a combination of uniform forward motion and uniform circular motion. Now, let us think of what do we mean by one cycle just I discussed that when you are at this position your point is at this position it corresponds to 0 degree of the rotation it corresponds to 0 degree of rotation when you are at this position then it corresponds to 90 degree of rotation when you are at this position it corresponds to 150 degree of rotation when you are at this position this corresponds to 180 degree position and if you are at this position this corresponds to 270 degree of rotation and if you are at this position you this corresponds to 330 degree of rotation and if you are a this position this corresponds to 360 degree of rotation 360 degree of rotation. So, from this to this place corresponds to one cycle of rotation corresponds to one cycle corresponds to one cycle. Now, there is another way to define cycle if I start with this point it means I am starting at at this position or crest of the wave. So, if I start at this position then if I go round and come back to again to this position. So, what you are going is you are started with maximum displacement in y direction you are coming back to maximum displacement in y direction that also constitute one cycle it means that crest to crest uh, point moving from one crest to subsequent crest consist of one cycle. Similarly, if you start at this point and come back take a rotation and come back to the maximum displacement in minus y direction then that also constitutes one cycle and so trough to trough consists of trough to trough corresponds to one cycle corresponds to one cycle. Now, let us come back to particle when a particular space is occupied by one particle the same space cannot be occupied simultaneously by any other particle in other words particles do not interfere. So, suppose there is one particle 
and there is a second particle if this comes this cannot occupy the position taken by this particle this can only occupy this position if this is displaced from its uh, earlier position so this is example this so there is a black particle and there is a red particle it has a fixed position now suppose this comes in this direction and tries to occupy this space then that can be only done by displacing this red particle so a particle can displace other particle and occupy the particular location in a space previously occupied by the other particle so you can see that now black particle is occupying the position of the red particle but it has to displace the red particle so when a particular space is occupied by one particle the same space cannot be occupied simultaneously by any other particle it can do that by displacing the other particle okay so what about wave wave can pass through each other so here are two waves a and b moving in opposite direction moving in opposite direction at this time they can be at the same region or same space they can be in the same region or at same space when they are in same region or a space they can do that by enhancing each other or cancelling each other in this case two waves are enhancing each other and that means they are interfering with each other when they interfere they can enhance when they enhance that is called constructive interference and when they cancel that is called destructive interference now if we go further ahead in the time what will happen that b will go in this direction a will go in this direction so what is happening that now b is at this position and a is in this position so they regain their original form when they pass each other they regain their original form when they pass each other so this is a difference between wave and particle so this is a nut cell what we can say the waves are spread in space and time and they can be in the same region and so they will so interference effect whereas particles are localized in space and time and cannot pass through each other they displace now let's think of what are the characteristic properties of the wave particle we know enough about particle but let's look at what are the characteristic properties of the wave examples are water wave or sound wave so one of the very important property of wave is wavelength and it is basically a distance between two adjacent crest two adjacent crest or it is a distance between two adjacent trough or it is a distance between this place and this place so basically when they complete one cycle the distance in x direction what they cover is called wavelength the shortest distance between two points that are moving in a phase or that are in same phase the wave number is basically reciprocal of wavelength and that represent number of wavelength per unit length so there is a relationship between nu bar which is known as wave number and lambda which is a wavelength the relation is nu bar is equal to 1 by lambda now what is period of a uh, wave it is a basically time taken to complete one full cycle so time it takes to go from one crest to another crest adjacent we are certainly talking about adjacent crest or 
it is a time taken to go from one trough to another adjacent trough and it is the reciprocal of frequency. I will talk about frequency soon. What is frequency? It is number of cycles per unit time, number of cycles per unit time. So, suppose in one second a wave completes a one cycle then the frequency of that wave will be 1 hertz, frequency of that wave is 1 hertz. For example, you see this case in 1 second it is completing one complete cycle and that is why this wave has this wave has frequency of 1 hertz. So, if suppose crest to crest movement which consists of one cycle happens in x second then frequency is 1 by x, frequency is 1 by x. So, frequency is basically the number of waves that pass crest per unit time or so a wave whose crest passes a fixed point every second has a frequency of 1 hertz. Now, look at this example what here shows you that the wave completes 3 cycle in 1 second, 3 cycle in 1 second and what does that mean is its frequency is 3 hertz, its frequency is 3 hertz. Now, just by looking at wave you can tell whether that is of high frequency or low frequency. Now, you can see here that if you go from crest to crest for this upper wave, it takes less time compared to the time it takes to go from one crest to another crest in the lower curve. And what does that mean is during one second the upper one upper wave will complete more cycle compared to the lower wave and that is why the upper wave is of higher frequency in comparison to lower wave. Now, next property is amplitude of the wave. Amplitude is the height or maximum displacement in y direction of the wave crest above the undisturbed position when y is 0, when y is 0. So, it is displacement from y is equal to 0, it is displacement from y is equal to 0. So, uh, y is 0 is this position and you can see that this is the maximum displacement of the wave and so your amplitude is basically a maximum displacement of the wave from the undisturbed position. Amplitude of the wave can also tell you about the energy it transport, the energy it transport. So, amplitude of a wave is related to the energy it transport. If amplitude is small, what does that mean is you have a low energy wave. If amplitude is high, then you are dealing with high energy wave. Now, next property is velocity of the wave and velocity of the wave is speed of the wave in a given direction. So, velocity is has two component, one is speed and another is direction and so velocity of wave is speed of the wave in a given direction. Next very important property is phase, is phase. So, just we discussed about that a uh, wave motion or path of a wave can be compared with the circular motion if we take into account vertical displacement with time. So, same thing is here. So, we just told you that this point, we just discussed that this point corresponds to 0 degree rotation in a circular motion and so phase is 0 degree for this point, for this point. If you go to this position which is the crest of the wave, this corresponds to 90 degree rotation. 90 degree rotation from the undisturbed position and so the phase of this crest or phase of the point at crest 
is equal to 90 degree. Similarly, this position corresponds to phase of 150 degree, this position corresponds to phase of 180 degree and this position corresponds to phase of 270 degree, this position corresponds to 330 degree and this position corresponds to 360 degree. So, two points moving with the same velocity which have same displacement from the undisturbed resting state are said to be in phase. What does that mean is that this point and this point have same phase, have same phase because 360 degree is basically 0 degree. Here this point and this point, if you compare between this point and this point, although vertical displacement is, although vertical displacement is 0, still they are not in phase because particle displacement or particle velocity direction is not the same, particle velocity direction is not the same. For example, if you take this particle, this is going towards this way and this particle is going towards this way. So, they are not in phase, in fact they are out in phase, they are 180 degree apart. 180 degree apart. So, it is not only amplitude, direction of path also matters, direction of path also matters. So, two points moving with same velocity which has same displacement from undisturbed resting state are said to be in phase. The phase can be expressed in angle and we have just seen that, that this corresponds to 0 this corresponds to 180 degree phase and this corresponds to 360 degree and one whole cycle corresponds to 360 degree. Now, let us think of what is phase difference, what is path difference. So, consider two waves which are shown here, one by blue and one by this red one. Now, what is the phase difference? Phase difference is basically used to describe the difference in degrees or difference in degrees or radians when two or more alternating quantities reach their maximum or zero value. So, what I mean by that these are the two waves, they reach maximum at these two position between these two or difference of phase between these two points is called phase difference between two waves. So, now you see this. Uh, this corresponds to 0 degree and this corresponds to 90 degree phase. So, difference between these two phase is 90 degree. So, you can compare between two crest, you can compare between two troughs or you can compare where the displacement, vertical displacement is 0. So, you can compare between these and these also and the difference in phase corresponds to your phase difference. For example, in this case the phase is 0 here and phase is 90 degree for this wave and so the difference between these two crest is 90 degree and so phase difference is 90 degree. Now, let us again think about other cases. So, here three waves are given wave y, wave y 1 and wave y 2. Now, you see y 1 and y 2 are almost identical, they are identical, they have same phase, they have same amplitude, whereas this y differs from y 1 and y 2 in that, that amplitude differs, but the crest are at the same phase, the crest are at the same phase. So, phase difference between y and y 1 and y 2 is 0 and so phase difference is given here is 0. So, y the phase difference between y and y 1 and y 2 is 0. Whereas, in this case amplitude of y 1 and y 2 is same, but their phase differs, their phase differs. So, this corresponds to 90 degree whereas, for this it corresponds to 270 degree 
and so difference between your uh, y1 and y2 is 180 degree 180 degree so phase difference between y1 and y2 is 180 degree now now we know particles and waves a basic difference between particle and waves we know now we will discuss about properties shown by both particle and wave so there are some property which are shown by both particles and waves what are those properties so reflection can happen with both particles and waves and you can see here that this is your reflection of particles and this is reflection of waves similarly refraction can be shown by both particles and wave and here is the example so forces pulls particle into medium here opposite force pulls particle from medium and this is the wave so wave is bends at entry and wave is bends at exit so both particles and waves so refraction property till now we discussed what are the properties which are shown by particles or waves particles and waves now we will discuss about what are the properties which is shown by which are shown by wave alone wave alone so one of the property which is shown by wave alone is diffraction diffraction and here you see this is a diffraction so if you pass monochromatic light through a hole you will see a diffraction pattern so as the waves go through the slit they spread out and this is called diffraction so you can see this is a diffraction diffraction is most noticeable when the gap size is about the same as the wavelength of the wave so here you can see it quite clearly in this case you will not see it quite clearly because there is a large gap or there is a large hole there is a large hole gap size is high gap size is high so diffraction is most noticeable when the gap size is about the same as the wavelength of the wave light waves have a very short wavelength compared to water waves therefore to diffract light gap needs to be extremely small in fact around 1000th of a millimeter now the second property which is shown by the wave is interference interference these are not shown by the particle so what happens is that if you take a monochromatic wave and then you pass through this two slit pass through your two slits what will happen is they will form what is known as interference pattern if you observe them on a screen then what you are going to see is a diffraction pattern of alternating dark and bright fringes dark and bright fringes if it is a particle a big particle what you are going to see is something like that two spots something like that so in case of wave you will see a diffraction pattern of alternating dark and bright fringes so these are two very important properties of waves which are not observed for big particles which are not observed for big particles so to prove that whether electromagnetic radiation acts like a particle or acts like a wave you need to do an experiment to see whether electromagnetic radiation undergo your interference or diffraction if you can show that it undergoes interference or diffraction you can speculate that okay 
your electromagnetic radiation is away. If it does not show interference or diffraction pattern, what does that mean is your electromagnetic radiation behaves as a particle, behaves as a particle. So, now think about why this alternating diffraction pattern of diffraction pattern of alternating dark and bright fringes is observed. So, think of there are two waves in same phase y 1 y 2 are in same phase, but they are of different amplitude. So, if they are in the same place, when they are in the same place what will happen that they will add to each other or they will enhance each other and it will lead to constructive interference and you will get this kind of wave, this kind of wave. But if you take two waves which are not of the same phase or you can say they, they are 180 degree out of phase, what does that mean? The position of crest of one wave coincide with position of trough of another wave, then y 1 is 180 degree out of phase with y 2. So, y 2 and y 1 phase difference is 180 degree. In that case, you will get a destructive interference and your amplitude will be simply a 2 minus a 1. So, when two waves are at the same place, constructive interference can happen and that will happen when crest of one wave interferes with crest of other wave. On the other hand, when crest of one wave interferes with trough of other wave, then you have a destructive interference, you have a destructive interference. So, now, we will look at whether electromagnetic radiation is wave or particle. Scientists started this quite long before and the first experiment was done by Young and that is famously called Young's double slit experiment and this was carried out in 1801. So, what he did is he passed monochromatic light through two narrow slit weights close to each other as given in this figure and it is detected at a screen placed on the other side of the slit. So, it is detected on this screen and what he got is a diffraction pattern of alternating dark and bright fringes and that is only possible with wave. So, electromagnetic radiation acts like a wave, acts like a wave and similar kind of explanation you can give. Now, this is if it goes through one slit, then there is like a spread of the wave, it goes through two slit, then there are lot of places where two waves are at the same position, you can see these are the places. If these two waves are in phase, then you have maxima, when they are out of phase or uh, when they are 180 degree phase apart, then there is a minima, there is a minima. And you can see here, these are the two waves, uh, this is your composite wave. So, you see here, so let us see this is now at maxima. So, here we see crest and trough interfere and so you got 0. Now, let us see. So, again drop and crest you see 0. Now, let us wait, this is moving towards crest drop again 0. So, when drop crest interfere, again it is going to 0. 
now you see this two at the same that is maximum that is a maxima. So, when crest and crest interfere then you have a constructive interference and when crest and trough uh, of two waves interfere then you have destructive interference. So, it was proved that electromagnetic radiation acts like a wave, but there was another experiment which is known as photoelectric effect. In this experiment what scientists observed is that potassium ejects electrons when struck by photons with at least 2.3 electron volt of energy and this corresponds to wavelength of about 514 nanometer which is visible green light. So, when you bombard the potassium surface with 680 nanometer, 680 nanometer light what will happen is no electron is ejected. When you bombard with 550 nanometer, 550 nanometer light electron will be ejected and its maximum velocity is 3 into 10 to the power 5 meter per second. When it is bombarded with 420 nanometer blue light electron is ejected with higher velocity. So, red light ejects slower electron than blue light and if you go red much redder than for example, at 680 nanometer it will not even eject electron. So, the observations are or observations were for a particular metal and a given color of light say blue it was found that electrons come out with well defined speed and that the number of electrons that come out depends on the intensity of the light. If intensity of light is increased more electrons come out, but each electron has the same speed. So, electron speed does not change with intensity of light, it is basically independent of the intensity of light. This is basically in contrast to if you consider or light as a wave. The other observations were if the color of light is changed to red electron speed is slower and if the color is made redder and redder the electron speed is slower and slower. For red enough light electrons cease to come out of the matter. So, these are the observations when potassium metal is hit by photon. Now, think of that if a man is standing in a sea water. So, it is facing waves am I right, it is facing wave. So, if so you can make an analogy to what will happen when your the metal potassium metal is with heat with a wave ok. So, what happens if you are standing near a sea water a small wave will not knock you off your feet right off your feet. So, a, a small wave will come and you are standing you are simply standing, but if suppose waves get bigger and bigger eventually they will be big enough to overcome your binding your fits binding to ocean floor and what will happen that way you will be thrown out on the beach you will be thrown out on the beach. So, a smaller wave may not knock you off your feet, but a bigger wave can knock you off the feet. This is opposite to what was shown in photoelectric effect that if you increase the intensity it is not going to affect the velocity, it is not going to affect the velocity. So, what we mean by by analogy to a man standing against a wave you can think of if light behaves as a wave 
So, what will happen? So, low intensity small wave will hit electron gently and so electron will move slowly whereas, if there is a high intensity wave which is a big wave if it hits electron it will hit electron hard and so velocity of electron increase velocity of electron so increase but you have seen that in photoelectric effect the velocity is independent of intensity of the light intensity of light so what does that mean is that particularly in this case electromagnetic radiation or light is not behaving as a wave it is basically behaving as a particle so based on this experiment albert einstein in 1905 proposed the this theory that electromagnetic radiation or light is composed of many photons which is a discrete particle. So, he told that apart from wave electromagnetic radiation can also act as a discrete particle or a bunch of discrete particles and then he went on to explain this photoelectric effect what he told that one photon will heat one electron and knock it out of the matter and if you increase the intensity what you are doing is you are increasing the number of photons. So, as the number of photons increases number of electron electrons knocked out will also increase. So, number of electron knocked out will also increase and this is shown here that if you increase the intensity of the light more number of electrons will be out. Now, let us think of why if you put photon of radar frequency why sometime electron will not knock off. It is because it requires energy greater than it requires energy greater than binding energy of electron to matter. So, if energy of photon is not good enough or not greater than binding energy of electrons to metal, your electron will not move out, electron will not move out and this energy binding of electron to metal is known as work function. So, if energy of photon is higher than work function then only electron will be emitted. So, based on this your wave particle theory is proposed by Albert Einstein which tells you that a photon resembles a particle but moves like a wave. The theory also suggests that waves of photons traveling through a space of matter make up your electromagnetic radiation. The particle and wave properties are not mutually exclusive, they complement each other, they complement each other. So, your electromagnetic radiation has dual property or light has dual property, it will sometime behave as a particle or sometime behave as a wave and it is not mutually exclusive thing. In fact, De Broglie in 1924 proposed the relationship between particle and wave. He told that energy of photon is related to frequency wavelength which is wave attribute and the relation he gave is lambda is equal to h by p. Lambda is equal to h by p where h is Planck's constant, p is the momentum of the particle of momentum of photon and lambda is wavelength of your uh, light. Now, what are the different, now we understand what is electromagnetic radiation, it is your, it has dual property. Now, we will look at some important properties of light. Uh, 
what is the difference between monochromatic and polychromatic lights. So, some lights are monochromatic and some lights are polychromatic. So, if you look at the rays from the sun, it is your polychromatic light. It means it is a combination of different wavelengths of light or it is a combination of waves of different wavelength. Whereas, the light from the lid or light from a laser is example of monochromatic light. It consists of a wave, it consists of waves of same wavelength, it consists of waves of same wavelength. Now, there is a difference between the another type of properties is polarized and non-polarized light. What we mean by polarized light is polarized light has electric fields oscillating in one direction, whereas unpolarized light has electric field oscillating in all direction. So, now you see that this wave has electric field oscillating in this direction, y direction. And so, this is example of polarized light, whereas if you see this light, it is a combination of different polarized light or, or you can say it is unpolarized light, because in this your electric field is oscillating in different direction, almost every direction almost every direction. The next property is, is coherent versus non-coherent light. So, we just discussed that sunlight which is polychromatic light. Now, let us compare between the light from the lead source or light from a laser. So, in the light obtained from the lead, a phase difference, there is a phase difference between different waves, although they have same wavelength although they have same wavelength, that combination of waves is called non-coherent light. So, this is your non-coherent light. So, in non-coherent light, waves are not in phase, whereas in coherent lights, waves are in phase, waves are in phase. So, wave that maintain, uh, waves that maintain same phase relation when traveling through a space and time are called coherent waves. Next property of uh, light is collimated and divergent light, collimated and divergent light. See, in collimated light, path of propagation of different waves are parallel to each other. So, you can see that these waves are parallel to each other. It does not mean these waves are of same wavelength. These may not be of same wavelength, they may not be coherent, they may not be polarized, but their wave paths of propagation are parallel. So, this is light from your sun, whereas light from electric bulb is divergent because the light which is coming out from a bulb, the path of propagation for the waves are not parallel. So, you can see these are the divergent. So, these are four different properties of light and I hope that you will be, you will now be able to understand these things. So, these are about the light. So, we have seen that electromagnetic radiation or light behaves as a wave and particles. Now, we will discuss about particles, particles such as electrons or baseball, electrons or baseball. Now, electrons behaves as a particle and that was first established by J. J. Thomson and he established electron as a fundamental particle of the nature, fundamental particle of the nature and he visualize the electron beam 
in a Crookes tube and this is the animation. So, you can see that there is a deflection by an electric or magnetic field. Based on that, he proposed that electrons behaves as a particle, electrons behaves as a particle. Now, the second question was can material particle exhibit wave nature or can photon, electrons and baseball exhibit wave nature. So, wave nature of material is first proposed by De Broglie. He got Nobel Prize for Physics in 1929. He proposed that matter particles should exhibit wave property just as light exhibited particle property. And this was first experimentally verified by Davison and G. P. Thompson with high energy electron and they showed that electrons also show diffraction pattern. Electrons show diffraction pattern which is the property of phase. So, they were able to show that matters can also behave as a material or an electron can behave as your wave particles. So, electron as a wave or electron as a particle. Interesting that J. J. Thompson told that electron is a particle whereas, his son told that or showed that it is not or rather electron can also behave as a wave. Electron not only shows particle behavior, it also shows wave property. And both father and son Dio got Nobel Prize. J. J. Thompson got Nobel Prize for Physics in 1906, whereas G. P. Thompson got Nobel Prize for Physics in 1937. Now, question is can or does de Broglie equation apply to all particles? So, let us calculate lambda for your baseball. So, if mass of baseball is taken as 0.15 kg and if lambda is calculated uh, when v is 40 meter per second, then lambda come lambda of baseball comes out to be 1.1 into 10 power, power minus 34 meter. Whereas, when electron is accelerated to 100 volt, the lambda comes out to be 0 0.12 nanometer. So, now you can see the difference between lambda. The lambda of electron is 0 0.12 nanometer, where lambda of your baseball is 1.1 into 10 to the power minus 34 meter. What that, that mean is de Broglie wavelength for macroscopic particle are negligibly small and this effect is extremely important for only light particles like electrons because this is the 0 0.12 nanometer is of the order of atomic dimension whereas 1.1 into 10 to the power minus 34 meter is negligibly small. So, if you take bigger particle like bullets and you try to see diffraction, you will not see the diffraction pattern, but if you take photons or electrons, you will see a diffraction pattern, you will see a diffraction pattern. What does that mean is your small particles behaves as a wave, whereas bullets or bigger particle does not behave as a wave. So, wave of particle property of a material will depend on size. Objects that are larger in the absolute sense have the property that the wavelengths associated with them are completely negligible compared to their size. Therefore, large particles only manifest their particle nature, they never manifest their wave nature. So, macroscopic particle never manifest their wave nature, whereas electrons and photons who are very small, they can behave as both particle and waves, whereas baseball 
will only behave as particle. Now, quantum mechanics acknowledge the wave particle duality of matter. So, we will discuss about quantum mechanics in the next class, but what uh, quantum mechanics does it, it acknowledges the wave particle duality of matter by supposing that rather than traveling along a definite path, a particle is distributed through a space like a wave. The wave that in quantum mechanics replaces the classical concept of particle trajectory is called a wave function. So, I will leave here because time is complete. In summary, your light behaves as both wave and particle in some of the properties. Some of the property exhibited by light can be explained by taking either wave nature of the light or particle nature of the light, for example, reflection and reflection refraction, whereas interference, diffraction and polar, polarization can be explained on the basis of wave nature of the light, whereas photoelectric effect and Compton scattering, which I did not discuss, can be explained on the basis of particle nature of the light, particle nature of the light. So, and again the second important thing is electrons too were found to exhibit dual nature. The books which I am referring is absolutely small by Michael D. Fair and Understanding Light Microscopy by Jeremy Sanderson and this is from Wiley publication. This is from Wiley publication and I am also referring to other quantum books, other quantum books. Uh, lectures have figure animation taken from different books or web. I have tried to acknowledge all of them, but if there is a omission, please let us know. We will try to acknowledge everyone and thank you for listening. Uh, see you in the next lecture. Thank you. Thank you.